So this is just an update on the cherry tomatoes that are climbing up these climbing frames and they seem to be doing very well. I did have to add a wooden stake down the middle of it because as it filled up it became pretty much a sail and started catching the wind and blowing around but the wooden stake seems to be holding it well and you can see that we've got a few good tomatoes setting down the bottom and getting smaller and smaller as they get higher up. But they're looking very nice. So some of the grape cherry tomatoes and just some other round cherry tomatoes that came up out of the compost but seem to be doing very well. Uh, one of the things I will tidy up is to cut off a lot of these smaller little end flowers. You can see where most of the fruit has set and then these other ones may or may not get fertilized but they're not going to really amount to terribly much. You can see a tiny one there, it doesn't look very happy. We may as well cut them off and not have the plant put any additional energy into trying to grow fruit right near the very ends of these. This is the first time I will have tried this. I saw it recently on one of the Charles Dowding videos. I like that guy's videos. He's got a lot of very good ideas and a lot of really good advice. So I'm going to take some of his advice and tidy this one up. And I've been taking out the internodal, or most of the internodal shoots. And <laughs> this is actually something that I, funnily enough, learned. One of the only things I learned from The Walking Dead, other than that I couldn't continue watching it after, I think it was season 8. I gave it a good, good run, but I think the um, tiger getting eaten by zombies was just too ridiculous. And I had to... I had to stop after that. But the thing that I learned was I think in season two, Herschel tells Rick about this method of growing tomatoes and picking out these internodal gaps. And he says, when you break it out, you take that, put it into the ground, take off some of the um, outer leaves and you've got a new tomato plant. This will start making roots and you'll just have a, a clone essentially of the mother plant. So I'm, I, I, I've got a lot of cherry tomatoes. Actually, well, I might, well, this one here, the grape tomato, grape cherry, I probably could do with another one of those somewhere. So these two were, you know, cuttings that I took from, I think it was the round cherry tomato plant, but I don't really need any more cuttings and uh, they've done pretty well. There's some flowers on that one. They've grown in size a bit. So I'm gonna put this one, let's say here. Got an empty spot there for it. Um, just set the camera up. So what I'm doing is taking off a lot of the larger outer leaves. Maybe leave just a few little leaves on there so that it can photosynthesize and then this main shoot will continue growing. The reason for taking off those outer leaves is that you don't want it to lose water essentially through those leaves because they will, the leaves will draw water up from the stem and now that there aren't any roots feeding it, they will basically drain the plant of any moisture that it has in it. Um, actually, let's put that over to the side here. I'll dig a deepish hole, put that down fairly low, cover it up, and that is a new tomato plant. It takes a little while to get going because it needs to establish roots and grow roots out of the side of it, but they're they're pretty vigorous and they take off. And I think I'm gonna do the same with um, one of the Roma tomatoes that I have growing. And this one's getting quite big now. And I've deliberately not taken off a couple of the internodal, might actually 
take the camera handheld to get in close up. Whoops. What have I done? There we go. And in here you can see some of the first Roma tomatoes on this plant. Now, where is that one that I wanted to take off? There it is. So in here, you can see that the main stem continues up behind, and there's, I've already picked out one of the internodals and it's shot another one. So I'm gonna break that off. And this will form another Roma tomato plant for me. And so once again, I'm going to take off the larger outer leaves and just leave that little bit in there and try to bury the rest of it underground I'm just to go. Hole in for this, try and get it really low down. That'll give as much opportunity for roots to grow out of that stem from as many places as possible and hopefully give me a strong plant. And the final thing I want to do today, which I said I would do in one of my earlier videos and haven't done yet, is to put up one of those frames around this cherry tomato plant. I assume it's a cherry tomato plant that's come up by itself and start training it up because this one's going well. The cucumber seems to be bouncing back a little bit, at least we can see some flowers on it. Um, so this one will have Roma tomatoes and hopefully some cucumbers coming up on it at some point. Could get a bit crowded but let's see what happens. And then I'm hoping to get a few more Roma tomatoes there. So I'll put another one of those climbing frames up for it. So I've got a few spare here. I'll grab two of these. hit the back of the bottom retaining wall block so I'll come in a little bit. There we go. Excellent. Let's grab that one. So now tomatoes can grow up there. Um, I haven't yet figured out what other things I'd like to plant in this bed. I think I might plant a few spring onions in there or plant some spring onion seedlings in, seeds in some seedling trays and then transfer the seedlings here. I don't actually remember planting a silver beet or a spinach or whatever this is, but looks good. I think it's a silver beet. But I honestly don't remember planting silver beet. Maybe it was a leftover seed from a previous season. Potatoes, thinking some of these might even be getting close to being ready to pick. This got damaged by these, um, I don't know if there are any of them around, but a large or many spotted leaf eating ladybird. Um, that's what all this damage is on the leaves. Uh, there's one. It's one of the adults. Come on, focus. There it is. So it's a ladybird that's got more spots on it than most, and, and there's a little leaf hopper next to it as well. Cool. 
Um, and these guys feed on the leaves and so do their larvae. And those things look creepy and crazy under a microscope. They look very, very spiky. I haven't actually figured out whether you can get spiked by the spikes all over the larvae, but they certainly look intimidating. And they're the things that have been crawling around and eating holes in the leaves. The leaf hopper, I don't know what they do exactly, but they're pretty cool. Got a blue sort of, and then a bit of pink up at the very top. An interesting color. Don't know if it's coming out on the camera quite as well. Let me see if I can get in a little closer to it. And they can fly as well. So if you disturb one, poof, they just jump up and fly off. Uh, yep, there we go, focus. Anything else to show? No. So we might have another tomato coming up here soon. Cherry tomato. I planted some Roma tomato seeds in there as well. And there's a little clump of them coming up. I should get some more cucumbers, hopefully starting to climb soon. Um, what I thought were water watermelons are definitely not. And I still don't know whether they're a butternut pumpkin or just one of the Jap pumpkins that's come up from the compost. There's definitely a watermelon in here. There is a cucumber there and that watermelon, which I thought was a cucumber. Whoa. <laughs> uh, automated water <laughs> systems, get the hell out of me. Um, what was I saying? The watermelon was not meant to be there and is growing very well, but I don't know what to do with it. Do I let it climb up this thing? I don't know whether I want watermelons up in the air or do I just let it go where, I don't know. <laughs> so yes, the watermelon was meant to be there and the cucumber was meant to be there, but I messed up which seedling trays I put the seeds into and got them confused and I've now put the wrong bits. So I gave the uh, tomatoes a bit of a trim, cut off some of the lower leaves and you can see much more clearly now the bunches of fruit at the bottom of it. And it's opened up a little bit more space in there. Um, Still got a bit of tidy up to do on it, but I don't know why I didn't film myself actually doing this tidy up. I just started looking at it afterwards and went, oh, I didn't actually do that. And then I started doing it and went, oh, put all the camera away. That's a bit silly. So I thought I'd come and show a um, bit of a progress shot. But I think we've got people coming over for dinner soon. So I need to get ready and stop doing stuff in the garden. So I'll call it a day and get back to that another time.